The video you're about to watch has been designed to take you deeper, higher, and wider into Yahweh. Enjoy, and please subscribe. Thank you. Father, we just want to enter into your glory and your presence right now. I know there's a lot of things in our lives that distract us. There are things in our day that comes against us just wanting to engage with you, love on you, worship you, even speak to you and engage in prayer. But Father, we come together here on a Friday, um, not to a conference, not to get laid, hands laid on, not to get prayed over, not to get prophesied to, but to be taught and trained and equipped, Father, by your direct voice as I speak like an oracle, Father, through your glory and your fire. So Father, tonight I pray that everyone in this room, everyone on Facebook and YouTube that receives this word will begin to engage the baptism of water to understand the commitment that's being made in your engagement into it. The understanding of the substance change that takes place when I go into Yahweh, when I begin to soak myself in Him, and I begin to look like Him, act like Him, walk like Him, talk like Him, and, and He begins to take on my form, just like I take on His form, because we're going into each other. I'm in Him and He is in me. And Father, we begin to understand that level of intimacy that I longs for, the change that it brings to step in, to all of what you make available, Father. So tonight I just ask that you will come and consume us with your presence. Take everyone in this room to a deeper place, higher, wider, deeper into you, so that we can see you, touch you, and walk with you in everything that you've made available to us, Father. You are an absolute incredible God, and we pray that your name and everything we do will be glorified. Amen. Okay, so we've been, uh, over the last couple of weeks, I say the last couple of weeks, so this will be week six since we started but only week three for this school because it's every other week. But well, we started with the baptism into Moses, the baptism into the cloud of Moses, uh, which is the cloud into glory, and it's the understanding behind the fact that Yahweh came and basically gave a contract, a marriage contract. In the Hebrew culture, it's called a ketubah. So it's a marriage ketubah. Um, in essence, he wasn't giving 10 commandments like we believe. That's a Greek way of thinking. As a matter of fact, it's a slave's way of thinking, because that's all the, 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 the Hebrews knew. They didn't understand anything else. They just knew how to be slaves, and that was 400 years. Um, so it was generation after generation that was conditioned to know and understand only how to be a slave. Now this awesome God comes in, wants to bless them, increase them, sets them free, sends them into a promised land where there's milk and honey, literally. Um, the, the, the grapes and the fruit and the stuff growing in this land is just incredible. And he wants to marry them. Now, of course, he doesn't want to put a ring on their finger and say, come, marry me so I can be your husband and you can be my wife. He's really proposing a covenant of intimacy with a people that he loves. And we begin to understand that that, that, that desire the Father had with the Israelites was rejected by them because they were afraid of him. Um, then we go on to baptism into Holy Spirit and fire. That's what we did last time we were here. And really that was just to understand the, the idea behind the reason we get baptized with fire. Fire always represents purity, cleansing, but it also takes us on a journey of receiving and walking in revelation regarding who Yahweh is. And baptism, the word in itself means in the Greek is baptizo, which means to go into. Right, so we begin to understand. I always use the example, if I take milk and I take an Oreo cookie and I put the Oreo cookie into the milk, I have the ability to change the substance of, what, of these two. You know, I can change the Oreo and the milk into something completely new. Right? And that's kind of what baptism does. I go into him, but he goes into me and we become one. We kind of completely engage and soak into all of who we are. Yes. Is that kind of like how Moses went and hung out with God for 40 years? Well, he only hung out with God for 40 days in the mountain. Well, 40 days, is that like hanging out with my dad and I... Well, that's kind of what the father wants, yeah. That, that deep intimacy. features and act like, kind of like my dad. Just I think like absolutely, yes. So, all in a sense, we all act like God well, let me, let me finish doing what I'm doing and then we can continue in conversation afterwards. Okay. okay. 
But I understand what you're saying, yes. That, that it is it's always related to the, 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 the relationships we have in the earth. Now, my relationship with my father on earth was re rejected. It was not as easy. My father was an alcoholic. I was struggling. We were struggling in communication. He would rather be alone than spend time with us. So for me to then build a relationship with God was difficult. But I had to break some of, through some of my perceptions. And the covenant that he wants to establish is a covenant where we are open with each other, where I trust him. I believe that he only wants the best for me. I understand that he has time for me and wants to spend time with me, that he wants to increase me and takes me to new levels in my life because his desire is to bless his people. We are the ones that are always too busy with other things. We are the ones that makes decisions regarding who God is in our own consumption or understanding regarding what we perceive. That's why I always say, if I say Jesus, then everybody has an, an understanding. He was the Son of God that died on the cross for my sins. That's the average perception. If I say Holy Spirit, we think comfort, guide, teacher, because that's the one who leads me to Jesus. Do we understand? But if I say Father, immediately it triggers a lifetime with or without a father. And with a father, it begins to trigger things that my father would do. The relationship that we had, was it good, was it bad? So it immediately changes my perception. So if it was bad, I no longer have a good perception about who God is. So I have to change my perception. So yes, that's what the covenant was all about. It's to change our perception regarding who God was. But in the water baptism, it is the Father's desire to prepare you for a new life. That's why they say, now of course we understand that you're not going to go to hell if you're not baptized in water. But there's many theology, the 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 uh, um, let me not say theology, there's many um, church groups out there that say it's essential. You have, to be, you have to be baptized. You have to get born again. You have to be baptized. And once you have gone through those two steps, you can start speaking in tongues. If that denomination even believes in speaking in tongues, but the idea is you have to be baptized in water. But we're beginning to understand that's not true. I will not go to hell if I'm not baptized in water because it's just the act that I go through for my soul to understand what my spirit is already engaged in. My spirit is becoming one with Yahweh. My spirit, uh, as it accepts Him and it's triggered into its new life, it's a reactivated fullness. Um, I begin to go into him and I begin to understand him and know him and we become one. The old man, the old ways, the old way of perceiving things and understanding things kind of dies off and the new is birthed into him. And so we begin to understand the preparation for the new life, the desire the Father has for us as his people to ignite into who we originally set out to be, originally set out to be. It says, For John baptized with water, but not many days from now you shall be baptized with, in place, introduced into the Holy Spirit. And of course, the Father's desire for us to begin to understand the desire that Yeshua had for his disciples to be baptized with the Holy Spirit, knowing that the Holy Spirit is the one that teaches you, guides you, and um, comforts you into all of who Yeshua is. Once you get to understand and know who Yeshua is, you begin to understand who the Father is because Holy Spirit represents the character and attributes of Yeshua in the earth and Yeshua um, um, kind of does the same except He leads us into the Father. And of course we understand once you step into Yahweh, which is God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, set out in one because He's one God, then the, the, the idea is that all of who we are steps into all of who He is and we begin to get reestablished in our original position as sons and daughters of the Most High. Being baptized means that you are following Christ's example, you are following a commandment, you're providing evidence for your relationship. But I want to remind you that up to this point the Ecclesia has only been baptized on this side of the veil. Now what I mean with this side of the veil is we have never gone into the kingdom of heaven. We've never operated from beyond the veil. Although the veil was torn at the crucifixion um, of Yeshua, no one's really ever gone in. There's been occasions where some has gone in, but we never understood that it's open and we're available. It's available for us to go into. We subconsciously believed for many years that death is our savior, that we have to die to go to heaven. We have to die to be perfect. We have to go through this physical death before we can see him, touch him, feel him, walk with him. But nowadays we're beginning to understand that we are seated in Christ in heavenly 
places. The fact is, we're already where he is. And if we begin to develop our eyes, our spiritual eyes, we can see him, walk with him, and get to know him at a higher level, another dimension of truth, higher than where we're at now. That is operating beyond the veil. So if I look at the baptism on this side of the veil, then it is following Christ's example. He was baptized, but he wasn't baptized because he was special. Um, because that's just what we believed. He got baptized because he was a Hebrew, and that's what they do. At a certain age, as a rabbi, you have to get baptized. Everybody got baptized. It wasn't a strange thing. It wasn't a new thing. Everybody got baptized. He got baptized. But at his baptism, there was two witnesses. Now, we begin to understand John the Baptist was one of the witnesses. And then, of course, Jesus' father, the voice that came from the heaven, said, This is my son, who I am well pleased. That established Yeshua, Jesus Christ, as a rabbi with authority. Okay, so baptism wasn't something that he just decided to do out of an act of obedience. It was part of the ritual that uh, the Hebrews would follow in the day. Okay, um, John came out of the wilderness and he did the baptism of repentance, making people shift the way they think from one perception of who God is to another. And of course, forgiving of sins. That's important. But when we enter into the kingdom of heaven and we go beyond the veil on this side, the baptism is literally becoming one with him. It's my spirit being torn away from my flesh, away from my soul, and my spirit being entering into Yahweh, and we literally physically become one, where I melt into him as a spirit being, and I look like him, talk like him, where all the information and understanding and revelation I had as a son before I was sent to my mother's womb is regained. And I begin to understand and perceive things again from that perspective because I begin to focus and meditate through his eyes. Begin to think through his mindset and his perception and understanding of things. Because on this side of the veil, I get to meditate on who he is. And I get to see and understand and perceive the angelic, the cloud of witnesses, the men in white linen, the seven spirits, the 24 elders engaged with the 22 letters. And I begin to understand that there's much more for me to become one with than just on this side of the veil where I go on the water and come back out. We understand the water represents my death, the death of my old life, and the coming out of the water is the resurrection into Christ, into my new life. Right? And Jesus came and spoke to them saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Now I want to break this up quickly in a small portions. Yeshua never said go into the world and get people saved. Not that that's a problem in any way, fashion, or form, because that's what we do, right? But his desire is to once somebody accepts Christ, that you as as a a son of Yahweh has to be there or send him somewhere or give him some kind of training so that he can mature and be equipped, trained and sent. Because we just lead them to Jesus and that's it. That's all they get. But his desire for us is to make them disciples. Like Yeshua, he had 12 disciples and he trained and equipped them over a three year period. And in the three years, the 12 even broken up into smaller portions where three of them would follow him everywhere. And they got the real deep, intense, intimate revelation that he shared with no one else. Only those three who always followed him around. He didn't choose them. They chose him. He chose the 12. So his desire for us is to begin to understand that when I make a disciple, I teach them how to become one with the Father, how to become one with Yeshua, how to become one with the Holy Spirit, how to engage and how to step into all of who He is, how to operate beyond the veil, not just on this side, how to understand the fact that Yeshua's blood is my porthole in. Yeshua's blood is the gateway and the doorway into the kingdom of heaven. That's why I'm seated in Christ. Because when they put that spear into his side and blood and water came out, that was my gateway in. Now, you understand, we, have, we said it before. When there's a birth, there's blood and water. So that was the birth of the bride, the birth of the ecclesia, and that also means that it's a gateway in for us. That's why we always understand that I get to go into Christ, I get to live and move and have my being in Him and activate my spirit being in Him and operate through that kingdom into the earth. That's what legislation is all about. How are you guys doing? Everyone still alive? 
Baptism is a necessary part of our spiritual foundation. We are uh, being built up as a spiritual house in the Lord. As it says in, in, in Peter 2, according to the scripture, it is very important that we build a strong foundation. Let me just say something here quickly. Um, uh, America, I don't know exactly how you build houses and how you guys do something, but in South Africa, as what I've seen, the way that it's laid down, the foundation goes into the ground um, in, in, many, in many different patterns all over the section that you want to build on. It's cement slab and they then throw it into the ground at about a meter, which is um, a yard. Okay, three to four foot deep. And that is then set with uh, some bricks that goes into the ground. It's literally tunnels built into the ground. The foundation is massive. Um, we don't have floodings like you do. We don't use uh, sheetrock and um, material for building houses that you do yet in America. We use bricks and cement. Um, of course, there's some steel fra uh, frames that we use as well, like you do. Um, the the, the uh, roofs are, it's, it's just a much, much stronger foundational way of building a house. But the idea is that before you do anything, a matter of fact, you can't start building a house unless the government has accepted your plans, your foundation is right, the walls and everything that you want to build, the place, the way you want to set out the house is going to work according to how the foundation is laid out and set up. And then after the foundation is laid, only then can you build a house. But the idea of the foundation is that once the foundation is built, you have to build a building. Otherwise, there was no point just wasting money um, on just building a foundation. Now, what the church has done up to this point, and I, I, I love it, but I also hate it, we have built a foundation on Yeshua. So Jesus Christ is our foundation, and we have this massive foundation laid out. You can talk to anybody at any church. They know who Jesus Christ is. <clears throat> they know that he died for our sins on the cross. That was the foundation. That's basically where the church is at. There's nothing being built on the foundation. <clears throat> the Father's desire for us is to understand that once a strong foundation is built, what needs to happen is we need to build upon that foundation. So once we have laid the foundation of who Christ is, we need to begin to build upon who He really is. <coughs> the foundation is just the basic things He did. He came to die for our sins, but how many of you understand? That's the, the basic foundation of the fact that He came. He didn't come only to die for my sins. He came to bring me restoration. <coughs> and we begin to understand that restoration is a whole deeper place. A whole new dimension of revelation because it's not just about my salvation it's not just about me not going to hell anymore <coughs> sorry it's about who I am as a son it's about the fact that the father's desire for me is to live in the kingdom of heaven to operate fully as a spirit a soul and a body consumed in Christ in all the different realms and kingdoms that's available up to this point, according to the Bible, we understand there's a kingdom of earth, <coughs> and we have dominion over it. We understand there's a kingdom of God on the inside of me, which we have to give dominion to God for. Yes, we have full dominion over the kingdom of God inside of us. And then, of course, the kingdom of heaven, which he wants us to co-rule with him, which is in the kingdom of heaven, which is called the third heaven. Well, that's what we believe it to be, according to what uh, Paul said. But Paul, being a Hebrew, meant Gimel, which is the Hebrew letter for number three, A, B, C, Aleph, Bet, Gimel, and it means full supply. <coughs> so we are caught up into the full supply of heaven, that's the third heaven, where the Father wants to begin to have us co with Him, where He trains us, equips us, and reveals to us the secrets and mysteries regarding who we are, operating as one with Him, living, moving, having our being from out of him legislating that kingdom into this earth. That's always been his desire, right? We understand that. <clears throat> his desire for us is to then begin to build on the foundation. 
In Hebrews it says, therefore, leaving the discussions of the elementary principles of Christ, let us go um, on to perfection, not laying again of, the, uh, of repentance from, the de from dead works and of faith towards God. Now, just, just listen to what I'm saying. This scripture basically tells us that for the last 500 years, the church has been preaching the basic um, elementary principles of Christ, Basically saying, saying um, <clears throat> repent from your dead works and grow in your faith towards God. That's all we've heard. That's all we've known. And of course it also talks about the doctrine of baptism. That's the basics. That's the foundation that's been laid. How many of you have been in church? That's what the church has been preaching for the last 500 years. He's saying that's elementary stuff. Let's move on from this. Let's take what we're doing tonight, the baptisms, get it over with. And let's move on to deeper, more intimate things. The Father wants to reveal a deeper intimacy for us and with us. It is basic biblical doctrine. We, can, we can't go on to maturity until we have experienced these things as it says in verse 3. And this uh, we will do if God permits. We have to understand the baptisms. That's why I do this in the school because if you have revelation of it, if you understand what it means to become one with Him, to go into Him. Now we're doing eight baptisms. So we've already done the cloud of Moses. We've done the uh, Holy Spirit and fire. We're doing the water baptism. There's baptism into His death, baptism into His resurrection. Uh, we have um, baptism into the Father, baptism into unity, which is baptism into each other. Um, we begin to understand the importance of understanding what it means to become one with who He has set us out to become one with. It's a higher, deeper place. <clears throat> God has to issue us a building permit, otherwise we are simply building with our own plans and devices, which will be nothing more than wood, hay and stubble. We understand this. Water baptism breaks the bondage of sin in our lives, uh, like Acts uh, 2 says, Then Peter said to them, Repent, and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, and the permission um, for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift. Of Holy Spirit. Exciting, right? Now, how many of you understand? It's not the gifts of Holy Spirit. So, when you're baptized, you're not receiving the gifts of Holy Spirit, you're receiving Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit has gifts, but when you're born again, you are baptized. The blessing or the gift from Yeshua to the Ecclesia is Holy Spirit. To engage Him, to love on Him, to get to understand Him, to know Him, to have Him pour into you revelation, knowledge, insight, wisdom, so that you can get to know Him and understand who you are according to the one teaching, guiding, and comforting you. His desire for you is to know Him. In knowing the uh, Holy Spirit, um, in, in the Hebrew it's a Ruach Kedesh. We get to know Ruach Kedesh. You get to understand the Holy Spirit, not Holy Ghost. I don't like that name. I don't know. Maybe you guys like it because it's a bold school. But I like Ruach Kadesh because it's the breath of God. Ruach. Um, I like Holy Spirit because it's that dimension of gentleness, comfort. And, and But yet, you know, when I've met Him and I've spent time with Him, it's almost weird for me to call Him Spirit. Because I don't call my Father Spirit. I don't call Jesus Spirit, although they are Spirit just like I am. But He is a person that wants me to engage Him and love on Him, that wants me to understand Him and, in, and, and be in conversation with Him and pray to Him. And He will do the same to me. He blesses me and teaches me and guides me. And He wants me to get to know Him. And in knowing Him, He gives me gifts. Now His desire for me, and we need to understand this, is to eventually grow out of the gifts. When I was younger, in the spirit, I would uh, prophesy according to the gift given. I would receive words of wisdom, words of knowledge according to the gift. I would have faith and working of miracles according to the gift. We've raised the dead three times. If I include the cat, four times. We have, we have seen great miracles, signs and wonders within the churches that the Father has given me to minister in and pastor. Um, I have used the faith as a gift. I have... Um, basically operated in all nine gifts, but there's a season and a time that the Father wants to elevate you as a son, as a daughter, to a higher place. When we shift from being and operating out of the gifts, from going to, to from going into the Spirit and operating from out of the Kingdom of Heaven. In the Kingdom of Heaven, everything is revealed. 
because in Holy Spirit and the gifts I can only operate in the gifts as uttered by Holy Spirit but when if you look at Yeshua's life he could operate in it at any given time which means he did not operate in the gifts he operated in the spirit he even said to one of his disciples I saw you in the spirit and when you were still lying at the by the tree doing this and this and this I saw you there because in the spirit all things are revealed. That's why he could look at the Pharisees and say, I read your thoughts, I know what you're thinking, I know what you want to say, I know what you're wanting to do Yeah, I know what you're thinking there. He begins to, uh, to open us up to understand that in the spirit all things are seen and revealed. And so the Father's desire for us to shift in to a higher place where he reveals to us deeper secrets. But we have to get to know the Holy Spirit and the baptism opens me up for that intimacy and that revelation to grow. And of course the Father's desire is to break the pattern in our lives that holds us back, bondage that keeps us from entering deeper into the Father. Repentance is that word that means change the way you think. And we begin to understand the Bible telling us that we need to think with our hearts because as a man thinks in his heart so he'll be. Now we don't understand how to think with our hearts because we've been conditioned to believe you think in your brain. But what it really means is to activate your spirit and to think through what your spirit engaged in and experience. So when I begin to change the way I think from with my brain and my soul, I shift into a new place where I think with my spirit um, and my, my heart, which is related to the kingdom of heaven and that which I engage in from that place. As the children of Israel left Egypt, they came up against the Red Sea, which is a type of Christian baptism. The children of Israel passed over dry land. The Egyptians tried to follow them and they were all drowned in the process. They were completely destroyed. Basically, your old life is stopping. It says it resembles your old life coming to an end. The children of Israel were no longer in bondage. They were set free of slavery. Uh, to the Egyptians, uh, God had truly delivered them. In water baptism, God wants to destroy our old nature and set us at liberty uh, as well from our past. Um, remember, faith is simply agreeing with God's word. When we come into agreement with God's word, he is able to work in our lives as a mighty, in a mighty way. Just understanding that it is still an act of faith. Even if, I, and, and I, I say this because I get baptized all the time. It's not like I go into the water and get baptized. But every time I engage, I can feel the shift. I can feel myself going in to the marriage covenant, going into the cloud of glory. I can feel myself going in to the um, baptism of repentance. I can feel myself soaking in Yahweh and every aspect of who He is just overshadowing me, covering me in, in all I do most of my day. And the Father, of course, wants that for everybody. His desire for us is to begin to understand who we are, right? In baptism, we identify with Christ in His death. But remind yourself, it is because of His death that there was a resurrection. So in the death of Christ, in you going under the water, there is now resurrection. And that resurrection is the resurrected power of Yahweh. And you having the ability to live in that. And of course, remind yourself that Yeshua being uh, uh, resurrected into a glorified body, into a glorified life, body, soul, spirit. He's glorified, restored into his original state, which is God himself. One of the most important things that we as Christians must um, do is change our identity. We can no longer identify with the world and all of its lust and pride. We must totally identify with Christ and all that is that He desires to do in our lives. We begin this process by identifying with Him in His death. Our old nature is crucified with Him. Isn't that beautiful? I absolutely love that. Exciting, right? <clears throat> okay, Romans 6, it says, Knowing this, that our old man was crucified with Christ, that the body of sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves of sin. You need to understand something. The Father wants you to not eat of the tree of good and evil. That's what we started out of doing, and that's what the ecclesia, the church, is still doing. I've been to church several times in my life, and 99% of the time when I listen to someone preach, they're telling me how bad I am, how much sin I have in my life, how much I need Jesus, how pathetic I am, how bad a loser I am, how I'm struggling with all these things, and I need to get with it. Now, maybe not quite in those words, but at the end of the day, that's kind of what the ecclesia has been preaching. It's all about the focus is all on sin. 
Yeshua wants to begin to get us to the place where we understand I am no longer a slave to sin. I no longer eat of what's good and what's not good. I don't do according to what I feel is right or wrong. I do according to who I am as a son. So it's not what I do, it's who I am. When I begin to understand who I am, the power and the glory of Yahweh comes out of the kingdom that I live in and the fullness of the glory exiles everything that I project in. I don't know if that made sense, but you need to understand the Father wants to set you free from the idea in your mind where you think, well, this is something that I'm doing right here. That's wrong. That's right. This is right. That's okay. It's not too bad. This is good. That is bad. I should stop doing this. And of course, with all of that and that perception comes extreme condemnation. And Satan is the one that brings condemnation. He's the one telling you you're a dirt down about the low down dirty shame you know this is what you've done how dare you come back to the church after this now you want to pray to god now you want to read your bible after what you've done but the father looks at you through the eyes of yeshua through the blood of yeshua so in the baptism he doesn't see you as a sinner or one in sin he only sees you purified and cleansed and literally sinless now we need to begin to see ourselves in that manner and take our focus off of what we do and begin to understand who we are the baptism is designed to propel me into who I am, not what I do. That's why we no longer eat of the tree of good and evil, we eat of the tree of life. That's Zoe life, it's a God type of life. It is the full abundant life that Yeshua brings because the tree of life is eating and drinking of Yeshua. That's the covenant that we engage with. Water baptism confirms the fact that our old nature, sin nature, has been destroyed just as the Egyptians were destroyed in the Red Sea. We are no longer slaves to sin just as the Israelites were no longer slaves to Egypt. God delivered us from um, them and God delivers you from the bondage of sin. Likewise, in Romans 6 it says, You reckon yourselves to be dead indeed to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. Now that, that brings you to the understanding alive to Christ, that every part of your life has to fall into alignment. Now alignment is basically, if I have body, well if I have my spirit, well let's see, if I have my body, my soul and my spirit, and my spirit is to overshadow my soul and my body, well the most people it's not, so most people is body, a soul and spirit in the middle, where it's supposed to be spirit on the outside, soul in the, in the middle with the body on the inside of the soul. Just understanding this. Um, and in each of them there's gates that's meant to align up. If I have a um, locker that has a, a, a digital code, you know, you know what I'm talking about? I have to turn it three times to the left, so it aligns on the side, then two times to the right, so the lines, then maybe three times to the right again, and then once to the left. Then all the slots is aligned, and it pops open. The idea of baptism, and what the Father wants to bring us to understand here, is that's exactly what needs to happen. Body needs to be aligned according to who you are as the son of Yahweh. Soul has to be reconditioned, re re uh, re re-established to who it's supposed to be, aligned. And the same with your spirit. Your spirit has to be reactivated. That's why we have to get born again. The reactivation aligns all. That's why we're righteous in right standing with God. And then everything gets poured in. And life begins to shift into place. And things begin to change. That's the Father's desire. That's why Galatians 2.20 says, I have been crucified with Christ. It's no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. The life which I now live, I live in the flesh. Um, I live by faith in the Son of God. Some translation says by, this, by the faith of the Son. And that's of course the difference between being the bride and being the body. The bride her, lives according to her faith. The body lives according to his faith. It's a shift. It's a high dimension of truth. One is at a lower place on this side of the veil. The other one is at a deeper place on that side of the veil. We'll get into, into greater detail regarding that. Um, Love in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Water baptism is <clears throat> that new nature that comes forth. I'm almost done, guys. I'm going to give it another maybe five or ten minutes and then we can close in prayer. I know we started late, but we were, I've already started a half an hour ago. Okay, but just as Christ was raised from the dead by, by the glory of the Father, even so, we should walk in newness of life. The Father's desire in the baptism 
of water so that you can begin to live out of His glory, out of His presence, and bring all of that that you carry in your spirit being into the earth and open up. That's why creation waits for the ecclesia, so that we can establish the glory of Yahweh that's in us in the earth. That's why He created us in our image, and we are reminded in His image. We are reminded that we are the only creation out of every galaxy, every universe that is created in His image. Are there other created beings out there? I'm not going to say there isn't, because it's an infinite God that can do what He wants. We've already got established that just according to the Bible, we've got men in white linen, we've got saints of old, we've got the 22 letters, the 24 elders, we've got seraphim, seraphim, we've got um, the four living creatures, we have the seven spirits. There's just too many created beings for us to just believe there's nothing else out there. We've got all these demonic entities and powers and principalities and rulers. We've got giants and dragons. There's just so much, but we are the only ones created in His image. We are the ones that all of creation is waiting for to mature. So we need to mature, not manure. There's enough manure. We need to mature. <laughs> That's why we need to rise above and begin to see what the Father sees. For if we have been united together in the likeness of His death, certain, certainly we also have to be in the likeness of His resurrection. We experience circumcision of the heart in the Old Testament. God established circumcision uh, to be an outward work which signifies a change of heart and a new covenant relationship between Israel and Himself. We understand that. In the New Testament, water baptism um, parallels this and is required for all of God's people. <coughs> Circum circumcision had to be done physically. You can't be circumcised in the spirit. Well, you can, but that wasn't the idea. The Old Testament, you had to physically get the foreskin chopped off. It was part of a covenant, new relationship, a dimension of trust that you'd go into. In, this, in, the, in the New Testament, it's a different place. But the Father's desire for us to begin to understand that He has a covenant of relationship established with everybody through the blood of Yeshua. So it's available and open and His desire for all is to engage as hard as possible. In Him, this is in uh, Galatians 2, in Him you were also circumcised with the circumcision made without hands by putting off the body of the sin of the flesh by the <clears throat> circumcision of Christ buried with him in baptism in which you also were raised with him through faith in the working of God who raised him from the dead. A dimension of the Father's glory is to erect you into your new life. Now when I say new life, it means Zoe life, a God type of life, a life where you are um, on top of the mountain, where you are the head, not the tail, where you are coed with Yahweh, you look at Him because He looks at you, you speak to Him because He speaks to you, you are one with Him because He's one with you, you know Him because He knows you, you love Him because He loves you, and we begin to understand the relationship that He desires and longs for. That's exciting, right? Let's stand. Thank you, Father. We love you, we praise you, we thank you that we can be baptized into you, but tit so we can become one with you, we can begin to walk with you and understand you, but not just that, we can go into you, we can perceive you from a different light, different perspective. Father, tonight I pray that everyone in this room will begin to engage you in their week with new heights, new levels. We begin to understand what it means to be baptized into you, and that you will not just cover and overshadow everyone in this room, but you'll begin to engage with revelation, wisdom, knowledge. Father, open us up, align our lives, stop the things that blocks us, Father. We have authority over every demonic entity, every power, every principality that comes against us, brings us sickness and disease. Father, we need to speak the life. And so I encourage everyone in this room to speak the power of Yahweh into place as you begin to understand who you are, a son, a son in his kingdom, a son of Yahweh. And when the son speaks out of the maturity that he has, everything has to align. So, Father, we ask that you will propel your people to a new level, deeper, higher, wider into you. I ask a blessing. I ask for favor in their lives. Father, in this week, let's begin to realize who we are and walk in a higher, deeper place with you. Father, we love you. We praise you in the name of Yeshua. Amen.